Scream Day this weekend. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah. um, Hello, Banana winner. Split Eating Contest winner! Oh, congratulations! Right. Winner. That's That's right. Right. Okay. I got second place. I got second place. <laughs> All right, we're going to get second. I am very impressed. Don't play around. I want to hear more about this. But for now, we're going to start the study session tonight. We have a presentation on the Cleveland County Wellness Square, and our partners at the county will be presenting today. Hi. Is it okay if we come up here so we can drive? Yes, please. Okay, perfect. And go ahead and introduce yourself for yes. all the recordings. Hello, I'm Melody Bays. Um, I am the executive director of the Cleveland County Wellness Square, and I'd like to introduce Tara Douglas. Hi, I'm Tara Douglas. I'm the director of community engagement for this project. Yeah, so my role once this project is up and running and operational, our doors are open, is really to make sure that we are operating correctly, we're stewarding funds appropriately, um, and Tara's role is going to make sure that we are offering the types of programming that Cleveland County residents and visitors would like to see, as well as continuing to build relationships with external and community stakeholders. And Derry Stacy is somewhere roaming around, and this... There he is. Oh, there he is. Perfect. <laughs> I didn't see you sit down. Um, Commissioner Stacy is here, and this is really a vision of um, the Board of Commissioners and of himself. So, um, so I shouldn't have eaten so fast. So to get started, um, the Cleveland County Master Plan, I just always like to feel the room. How many of you have heard of the Master Plan today? Okay, so a couple. I would like to quickly pass around, if I can, a mm -hmm. copy. Mm -hmm of the plan because I think it has, well, a lot of thought was put into this plan, but also it has a lot of good imagery and narrative about what the Just county um, is trying to do with the Cleveland County complex and the surrounding area. But truly it was thought of as a way to create a new hub in Cleveland County. Um, we'll show you a map of where it's oriented, but we wanted to increase walkability, provide more health services, for residents and visitors of the county meet the growing new, um, sure, needs sure. of the community. Um, and that includes sure. economic development and job growth um, and walkability, bikeability, working with ACOG on bike ped plans, just really make it a hub of the county. And all of this is gonna take place right here in the county seat, which is Norman, which is great. The uh, master plan started with initial um, a kickoff design workshops. There were several of them that were held that included um, the farmer's market vendors and local health systems and just anybody in the community who was interested in participating. The final master plan um, was signed, sealed, and delivered in September of 2017, and it was adopted by the commissioners in November of 2017. That's a really important distinction to make because I think a lot of municipalities and counties put a lot of thought and resources into developing plans that often end up sitting on shelves and there's not funding that's allocated to them. Um, but it's really exciting for both of us, um, and I'm sure for all the residents of Cleveland County, that this is a plan that's really being implemented. And so for all of you who work in government know that to go from 2017 to 2018 when Tara and I were hired last fall, that's really quick implementation. So things are moving really fast and we're excited about that. Currently, Tara and I are um, presenting. We're doing pr presentations like this, meeting with community resources and partners, anybody who would be interested in engaging the space and providing any programming in this space, that's who we're trying to talk to, as well as getting feedback from anyone who would use the space. So what is needed in the county, what programs are already happening that we don't want to duplicate, but maybe want to create an additional access point in this infrastructure space. Those are the kind of conversations that we've been having since October and we'll continue to have until our doors are open in spring-ish of 2021. Um, in addition, we're also going through the front process of building design and construction. We have ADG, who are consultants here um, behind us who are helping us project manage that. Um, our design firm is AHMM out of the city, and we have GE Johnson as our construction um, managers at risk on board. This is a quick uh, bird's eye view snapshot of um, the entire area where the master plan is set to take effect. This is the courthouse right here. You have the parking garage, which is um, phase two of the master plan. And then this is the uh, block of space where we're gonna have um, the wellness square. And so its original orientation was going like this. We've kept that orientation in our design, which we'll show you here in a little bit. 
Um, but since uh, the master plan was adopted in 2017, we have uh, purchased some additional land um, just, what, what direction is that? Just west. Just west. And in terms of timeline, um, our project, the Wellness Square, will be one. Parking garage, as you know, demolition has happened. So that is supposed to be two, but they're happening sort of in parallel with each other. And then the courthouse will be in the next three to five years because that is the most costly project, but also the largest one. Um, you all are the first to see uh, this slide, and we're going to have some other slides now that we are done with our schematic design phase of um, our design process. I will ask respectfully um, that no photography be taken during these um, images because we haven't released it to the public yet and we haven't gone through um, any pricing yet. That's about to happen. Um, yeah, yeah, so please, please no pictures, no photography. Um, I had asked that nothing be printed um, and I think some printouts have happened so I will be collecting those before we leave. Just also know that this yep. is televised. Yep. Okay. Got Making it. sure. Got it. Yeah, I think we just don't want any media to take um, hold of this because this oh, is yeah. going to be a big opportunity for us to really promote this space. And it's not finalized. So this is, if any of you have built buildings, which I know you have, this is the first phase. We have two other phases to go, folks. And so <laughs> price and budget is going to really dictate how far we're able to, to stretch our, our funding and our building footprint. Um, this is the... Uh, CAD, I guess, drawing site plan. It shows um, two pieces of, oh, I'll just keep pointing to it. This is the farmer's market pavilion. If you can imagine, this is uh, James Garner Avenue as it looks today. I know there's some exciting new development that's um, going to be taking place there. This is Ufala, mm -hmm. Ufala, Comanche, um, and then you have the you know train station right there. So um, that helps to orient you a little bit. Our architects have proposed that our multi-use pavilion is what they're calling it, be roughly 4,800 square feet. That is going to be where the farmer's market is going to move. So we are weekly working with our farmer's market vendors on this transition, even though we don't anticipate having um, the new season of the farmer's market operating in this building until 2022. Um, it's still gonna take a couple years of work to, to get them over there and talk about amenities and what they would like to have in their building um, and just policies and administrative um, issues that I know we'll, we'll face anytime you're moving anyone to a new building. We also have this 16,000 square foot and um, two story, we're calling it the program building. It says healthy living building on there, but we have since rebranded. Um, and that will be where we're going to operate a lot of programming that Tara will talk about. You said that was the healthy program or what are you calling it? Um, the administration programming building, admin building. It's really where the bulk of our programs and classes and services will happen out of. Yeah. So looking at floor plans, we wanted to share some of these images with you because they're becoming pretty conceptual. This is uh, the pavilion. It can house um, roughly 57 um, stalls, both inside and outside. It's interesting because as we're talking to a lot of our farm market vendors, um, many of them prefer to be outside. They think that's quicker access to the public. They see them. Some of them sell out out there a lot faster than when they've been inside in the warehouse. So that was interesting to us. We initially thought, well, everyone's going to want to be inside, but that's not the case. Some people wouldn't move inside even if you offered them a free stall. So, um, and it's nice because with our site plan, we'll be able to have um, uh, oh, tents lining um, outside, vendor tents, and they can run the course of um, the entire site plan up and down. These will be garage doors, um, glass garage doors that can open and retract. So it can be all weather. And if we ever want to extend our season, we get some vendors and some farmers who, you know, are doing cold frame cropping and doing a lot of cabbage. We have the opportunity to, to um, keep our season going longer into the winter or even year round, maybe. Um, what else do I want to tell you about this? It can dub as event space and I think hold close to 270 um, in rounds. So that'll be exciting. It can also be used as a recreational area. The ceilings will be high enough that if you want to do some intramural sports in there, you can. Um, yeah, and there's refrigeration in the back and storage in the back and 
um, AV that'll be lined up, and then we'll do some beautiful things with our landscaping as well. Moving over to the admin building, I know this is kind of hard to see, a little blown out. Um, this is our classroom incubation space. So these are essentially four, four white boxed in rooms. We're not sure exactly what they'll be yet, but we want everything in this building and the other building to be multi-use. We can't clutter it up so much that it can only be used for one thing. If this isn't a 40,000 square foot building, we have to really be smart about how we're using our square footage. Um, so right now, architects have this as some sort of retail space. Maybe it's a smoothie juice bar that has external capacity to access um, from the outside. We have a, a kind of training classroom set up. I think we've been thinking about making this sort of a clinic co-op where we can, yes. Councilmember Wilson. Is there any plans for a commercial kitchen that might be a rentable space? Yes. Okay. We're getting there. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm glad that came to your mind. Great mind. <laughs> we'll have a bigger classroom space here that I think holds, what does it say, 100 people. It's one of our community rooms, one of two. Obviously, we'll have the our admin space, um, conference, two conference rooms that can be um, used by anyone who wants to use it, local nonprofits, anybody who doesn't have a professional boardroom who would like to use it. Um, restrooms that can be accessed um, from the pavilion. Um, or if there's an event going on over there, we can shut off this side. There'll be access control, so you can use that both for both buildings. Then we'll move upstairs. So we have another classroom that I think is roughly 40. This one they have at 100 folks um, lined up uh, in classroom style, and you have your kitchen and these two spaces really are are shared. They're connected by either a bar, um, like a table, cooktop, however that might look. But this is our rentable demonstration kitchen space. So we are in talks with some um, community stakeholders about how what type of kitchen that should look like. There's a big difference between a demonstration kitchen, between a commercial kitchen, between a training kitchen. I mean, those can all be uh, they can look really different, and there's also a different cost associated with those. So we just have to, again, get into a little bit more pricing and see how how decked out do we really want this kitchen. Um, but we will have a kitchen. We will be able to use it for educational opportunities. That's the whole goal there. Um, and we foresee that when these spaces aren't used for programming, that this can be a pretty event space. So if nonprofits want to have a fundraising um, event there, they can do that as well. Uh, something that's really beautiful about the space and unique is it offers this rooftop um, terrace. So we imagine these to be glass retractable doors or sliding doors. And out here you have the second story that looks out over <coughs> our, our beautiful new James Garner Avenue, hopefully. Um, and landscaping, they talk about having a piece of public art here or um, a heritage tree or something. It'll have a two-story um, open lobby that you can look down. Um, plenty of storage, restrooms up there as well. Quick question about yes. the landscaping. Yep. I think some of us have in previous conversations talked about uh, food, like uh, fruit trees mm -hmm. that would mm -hmm. be free for anyone that would happen to come by and want some fruit to encourage healthy living. It seems like the healthy living block would be an interesting place to put those. Mm -hmm. Has that been considered at all or talked about? No, and probably it won't be because of maintenance and upkeep because of fruit and what you have to deal with mm -hmm. through the season. So uh, that mm -hmm. would be very difficult to take care of. So obviously we want something that we can maintain that is a little possible and survives very well in We've talked a lot about demonstration gardens and how the garden can be used for programming. Obviously, OSU Extension is a big partner of ours, um, so we're constantly talking to them about how can we incorporate a lot of the programs and services they already have going on in this space and what their wish list looks like. Some of that we're going to be able to fund, some of it we can't, but I think a demonstration garden is an easy one that we can plop in. Um, we've talked about, I think they already have up here sort of this herb garden, so that could be an educational opportunity as well. Herbs are, um, you know, if you live in an apartment and you don't have 
um, land to do anything, you can grow stuff in containers. So container gardening is becoming really huge. They do a lot in New York. Initially, when we talked about this site plan, the whole rooftop was going to be a um, oh, a green roof, where I mean, a green roof or a greenhouse, and it was going to be this huge horticulture and agriculture opportunity. But to Commissioner Stacy's point, that takes a lot of maintenance, and we're not going to have a landscape architect on staff um, to maintain that every day. And if you leave it to Tara and I, <laughs> might get burned I'll kill up. tree real quick, like pretty <laughs> fast. So sustainability is really important, and. Highest amount of impact for lowest amount of ongoing maintenance is kind of our, our mantra. And I will pass it now to Derek. Sure. And I'll just sit here and chat so I'm not blocking any views. But if you guys have trouble hearing me, let me know and I can absolutely stand up. Um, a little bit of background, our project um, is it's being funded not only the construction costs, but our ongoing operations and programming expenses is coming from local ad valorem dollars that are already earmarked for public health. So this is absolutely a direct partnership with the local health department, and they've been on board with this from the start. But my job as having a background in public health and also being in the role that I am with this project is really ensuring that this project maintains a true mission of public health when it's serving our residents, um, from the programs we provide, what kind of after hours events may be hopping up out of this facility. We wanna make sure that it's really benefiting um, health and wellness and quality of life of the people here. Um, a great thing about public health is that it touches all demographics and it touches entire lifespans. So really, we can offer something out of this space that can serve anybody. And that's what we want to happen is everyone to really feel like no matter what, any time of day you can walk in and there's something that we can offer that would interest you. So our job has been um, working with local um, community partners across the county and really kind of getting lots of feedback of what would you like to see out of this space? Uh, what's already happening is in regards to programming that we don't want to duplicate or what's happening but maybe needs some extra support. Maybe they don't have enough space or there's not enough promotion and how can we kind of help fill some of those gaps? Um, so some things that have come up in those conversations for programming ideas um, range, really range the gamut. So healthy eating obviously is a really easy win um, with that big, beautiful kitchen space that we're going to have. We have high hopes for doing lots of nutrition education, cooking demonstrations. I think that's going to be a great partnership with our local farmers market vendors. Um, we've also been working really closely with the OSU Extension folks as well to how can we tie in local horticulture education and growing your own food and also how do you prepare that food once you have that. I think the possibilities for that kitchen are endless. Um, active living, um, again, I think that can run the gamut as well. We've talked to the YMCA and some other organizations about partnering on some free and very low cost accessible um, activity classes that range for all ages. So maybe that's yoga on our green space or Tai Chi in the park or whatever. Council Member Scott? Yeah. Um, I had a question about that. Um, I think we've had some conversations like about the National Fitness Campaign and they have fitness courts. I'm not sure if y'all have talked to them. Yes. Yes. So I, um, in my previous role, was at the Oklahoma City Community Foundation as their director of health and wellness programming. And we actually flew them in to get a presentation from, it's a proprietary uh, model and there was only one that was built in San Francisco last summer and so I guess Oklahoma City has like five now has like five now so yeah. we are Oklahoma City is now their I don't know, their model city they were looking for one to really plant anywhere from 10 to 18 and I think they because of bond issue funding they had around five that they could give some money around and use um I will say that those I, just personally, I, um, you know, when we're talking about programming and fitness for the purposes of the county, we have to think about every, everybody in the county and all age demographics. And those fitness courts really offer circuit training, and they suggest that nobody under high school age be allowed to be on those courts. And so that was something that really stuck in my mind personally as a mom of two kiddos, um, that, that for me to be out there working out and my kids can't play on the equipment, what happens if they break a piece of equipment, then, I mean, it's all proprietary, so you have to go and repurchase. So there's, it's an interesting idea. I'm interested to see how Oklahoma City takes that on. I know they have ambassadors to program those spaces. I think that'll be a good um, testing space for us. I'm gonna quick follow up. 
as the so as far as free programs go will you also be offering free nutrition farm to table courses and things like that absolutely that's that's our intent um we've been working and talking with obviously our farmers market vendors i think it's going to be a huge partner but the other agencies in the area that are already doing low cost no cost nutrition education um like Norman regional hospital obviously the local county health department places like that have already committed to bringing their dietitians that they already have on staff into our space to providing those free or very, very low cost nutrition education classes. Cool, thank you. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? So active living, which that was a great question. Really, um, again, making sure that our space, both indoor and outdoor is flexible and uncluttered to where really it can be used for anything. So we know that pickleball is a big thing. So having the space there, if you wanna do a pop-up pickleball activity, <laughs> have at it, or even just having ample, uncluttered, unprogrammed green space where people can come and do whatever they want. It can change day to day, keep it new and interesting, low cost without committing something to only one activity. Um, health promotion and access to care is obviously a big issue with us as well. And some conversations that we've had with the local healthcare system and variety care, some of the other providers in the area has been kind of kicking around an idea of what I'm calling is a clinic co-op space. So really just having one of those flexible rooms that is shelled out, not necessarily traditional clinic that is staffed 24 seven, that's not what we are, but just having the space that um, different providers and organizations in the area could come and provide those low cost, no cost uh, preventive health screenings. So when we've been talking with partners across the county, a big issue that we continuously hear is dental screenings, vision screenings, um, blood pressure screenings, all those preventive things that I think a lot of people kind of go by the wayside with and really making sure that we're that additional touch point in the county for those agencies that are already providing those services and how can we get the word out that those are available. Um, so Melody mentioned that we're gonna be a two man team. So obviously the two of us will be housed in this facility once we're up and running. Um, our third teammate will be Mark Braley, who is the county's um, veteran services coordinator and he's obviously a familiar face, very, very embedded in this community. So we're ecstatic to have him on our team as well. Um, so having all those veteran services and those programs will be operating out of our space as well, which we think is gonna be an excellent partnership. Um, some other opportunities we've heard, I mean, branch the gamut, child health, car seat check events, safety, you know, safety programs. Um, really, we want to make sure that we're covering the gamut of the social determinants of health. So really anything that can improve someone's quality of life, possibly lift them out of poverty, give them access to a needed resource or information, that's public health. And that's what we're trying to do out of this space. Um, so even some of those non-traditional that you don't think is typical healthcare partners, we reach out to like the Pioneer Library System. They've been a tremendous supporter of this project. And I think a lot of their mission and programming with health literacy, with workforce development, and really just empowering people to lift themselves out of poverty, um, I think align very closely with our mission as well. So that could Council be interesting. Yeah. Two questions. One about veteran services. Of course, there are already two veteran services around Norman. How will that mm -hmm. relate to, to this? Will they? I mean, in some way interface or that, yeah. we created our veteran service coordinator he uh, really is a person that connects the dots so we have services many more than two all over our county but we have no one-stop place for people to go in order to see what all those services are available so he doesn't manage specific caseloads that people within the county go to him and he puts them in touch with the people that they need whether it be the university mental health services, those that you're talking about or others, that's what his job is to connect the dots with them. More of a coordinator than exactly. somebody like the Dale, whatever it is, et cetera. Exactly. Yeah. The, the other question I guess I have, what I don't see on there is homeless. One of the things that, that uh, the Norman police do very well is coordinate a homeless expo quarterly mm -hmm. where people from state, from social security and so on, all, other uh, organizations, Thunderbird Clubhouse comes to mind, gather at the library mm -hmm. and, and uh, they uh, offer services to the homeless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, does that fit into this? Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I was just going to say, I, I sit on the board of Food and Shelter for Friends, which is here in Norman and obviously deals with the homeless population a lot, as, as you all know, I don't have to explain their mission. 
Um, I think for the purposes of this site and the programming we offer, again, we are here to offer programs for everybody, for everyone in the county. So that includes those who are homeless, those who live in Carrington Lakes, those who are employed, those who live on the side. I mean, this this is going to have programming that um, there'll be something for everyone, but not everything for everybody. That's really the mantra we're using. I think that's a great example of something that we would like to see out of this space. We're connecting all these different agencies and the resources they provide in one easy access location. That's also beautiful and has all these fun things happening. Thank you. Yeah, Council absolutely. Member Scott. This is a uh, just a random question. So I understand most of the funding for this will be just coming from Ad Valorem. Mm -hmm. As a wellness square and a health, a health and wellness sort of opportunity, if and when Medicaid expansion were to pass, would the county receive any funding for this type of project? I would so, doubt it. Yeah, doubt it. since we're not actually providing any direct care out of this space, I don't, I don't receive. I so. Yeah. I also used to work for the healthcare authority. And so, so Medicaid <laughs> expansion had come around a couple times and the types of services, it's just very, I mean, getting school-based services covered through an expansion opportunity was pretty difficult. So I, it would be great if it could. I would love um, to receive some yeah. of that funding. Please. Curious, <laughs> since it is yeah. like a health initiative, I wasn't sure yeah. to yeah. have potential. Yeah. Awesome. Great question. Any other questions on programming? All right. um, so we've kind of mentioned some partners that we've met with thus far. Um, obviously, the local health department, they are the local public health entity in our area, so they're a natural partner. They've been, again, from the get-go, just a huge champion for this project. Um, we've had conversations with most of the local nonprofits. United Way has been just a really great connector of different agencies that we should work with and present to you and get this on the radar and let them know that this space is there for them as well. Um, we were tasked right out of the gate to make it very clear that this is a county project that serves all the communities in the area. So we've been reaching out to all the different municipalities to see, you know, from city governments, you know, what would you like to see out of this area? How can we benefit your residents, the local school systems, chambers? Yeah. Are you going to do something neat with everyone's flags or? You know what I mean, like a, our seal all around a courtyard or something? We have some plans for our, in the master plan for the courthouse side of it okay. to incorporate some of those things into Yeah, I think that'd be a neat opportunity to, yep. mm -hmm. so. Cool, I like that idea, good idea. Um, Chamber of Commerce, Commerce is obviously local YMCA. Um, Civic clubs in the area, again, the Pioneer Library System, I can't compliment them enough how great they've been through this process. Just such huge supporters. And Norman Regional Health System has also been an outstanding partner in cheering us on and, and constantly wanting to partner on this project. And More Norman Technology Center as well, we reached out to them and met with their new leadership and let them know this project was happening. Again, I think they have a wealth of programs and services and classes that would fit very nicely out of our space. Um, so local tech centers. Yeah, can move on. Council Member Scott. The nurse, is the nurse is calling me. Sorry, I promise I'll let y'all keep going. I just yeah, have one fine. more question. Um, in Tulsa, there's this Mother Road Market, which is uh -huh. basic. You guys are aware. Will there be something like that here, where you bring in healthy? I see you're <laughs> making. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> you had a great idea. Reading okay. Mr. Stacy has had a great idea about that. <laughs> So How to incorporate a Mother Roads market yeah. idea. There will not be a Mother Road market in this. Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> but we'll, like a Cleveland County version of something? <laughs> 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 That was okay. very cryptic. But that we was. Did. <laughs> I know. Better <laughs> market and loved their mission and their programming and how they partner um, with the workforce development side of things, the nutrition education. They work with the local food banks, the farmers okay. markets, yes. and um, at least with our kitchen space out of our area. With the if we are able to make it that incubator kitchen where people could use it as business development, but you know, tie in nicely with local food banks and. But yes, well, I will it's on our change. radar for sure. Yes, I loved it. It is awesome, isn't it? I want to do that really with like fun. all health foods. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good stuff. That'd be yeah. awesome. I saw an it's article good. in cool. Oklahoma City that that food hall is opening. Mm -hmm. I am curious to see how many healthy options there are in yeah, that space. Right. Um, so I'll move 
into kind of the more fun side of things. You guys have just heard me talk. But um, like Melody mentioned, we are just right smack dab in the thick of the design process for our space. So we finished schematic design and we are starting to move into the next design phase, which will really get into the fun nitty gritty details of, you know, floor plan, exact layouts, building out all of the, the materials and the finishes. But our architects have kind of given us some of these precedent pictures is what they call it to kind of see give us a taste for kind of their vision of what this potentially could look like. Again, once we get in the pricing, this could all change, but to kind of show you guys kind of a feel for what this project might look like when it's um, up and running, but lots of um, kind of that industrial look, but they really like the corrugated kind of sheer metal that really lets a lot of natural light in. Um, we told them we'd like the space to be very open and airy, natural light, lots of greenery. Um, so these are some of the materials and finishes that they're kind of exploring for the exterior of the building that's still durable and will hold up against Oklahoma weather. Um, lots of natural finishes inside as well. So light colored wood, um, again, bringing lots of nature inside. And speaking of nature, is it going to have a shelter? Storm shelter. Storm oh. shelter. Yeah. So we have talked about um, engaging somebody who's going to and work as a consultant to help us through a lot of safety issues. So storm shelter was an easy one. Where in this facility on the ground floor can we incorporate something that's reinforced? Is the question is a public storm shelter? No one. No. Let's say okay. one. <laughs> yeah, I know the answer to that, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> but will we have a safe room reinforced something? Right. Like what the libraries do, where the bathrooms are, right. the doors are mm -hmm. really hard to open because if anyone that is there would yeah. have somewhere right. to go. Somewhere to to duck and cover for sure. And our bathroom's a little trickier since it has that external mm. wall. So we'll find something. Maybe find a really something. fancy storage closet. We don't know yet, but it'll work. <laughs> um, and as you guys maybe saw in kind of the, the initial renderings, our roof line is really unique and we're excited about it. They The architects call it um, sawtooth design, but really they're trying to capture as much Northern light as they can because it's energy efficient. You could control it. You get a lot of um, natural light in the building. Um, and so you can kind of see some examples of that angled roof line in those pictures. And that's kind of a sample of what that looks like in a space. And we were actually able to see it in our architect's offices. <coughs> Sawtooth. Sawtooth. It's jagged. From that CAD design, I don't know if you could tell, but it had kind of that. That's awesome. Know, there may be a better picture in, in, in here as well. And we may want to stop um, before we get to the restoration thing. And I can say that. Sure. Because I think you have to um, some more, again, ideas of finishes, making sure that everything is not only beautiful and light and airy, but very durable. Again, we want to make sure that this investment lasts a long time. So making sure that we're investing smartly in the materials that we use, that they can withstand high foot traffic, um, incorporating, again, lots of greenery. Um, I think this could be a great educational piece as well, you know, bringing some of those community gardens indoors. Yes, Councilor Patron. Have you all considered incorporating solar? And I also have a question on stormwater. Okay. But solar at this point is uh, cost prohibitive at this right. point. Okay. And then at some point, are you going to talk to us about stormwater? Stormwater. I will say that um, we had an initial just one meeting with our landscape crew, and they are definitely thinking through a lot of those rainwater gardens and runoff and how to handle that with um, plant life and how to smartly work so with that. Some beautiful uh, renderings of what we can do in order to address the issues of stormwater or landscaping. And currently it's all impervious service right now. Anyway, parking lots, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this could actually improve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will it be LEED certified? No. 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 Okay. All right. Very much so. <clears throat> okay. Oh, one. What you want? Okay. Um, obviously, we've been, we are actually located in the Walker Arts District, so we've worked with um, some of those folks as well to kind of put on their radar, how can we incorporate public art into our space? And we've put it on our architect's radar as well. And this is kind of some of their examples of how public art can be interactive. It can possibly be educational, how um, everything from the details of the furniture and the finishings that we incorporate in the space can be artistic and beautiful, and it can all flow very nicely. Um, so we're really excited to see what they come up with and kind of some more along that lines, everything from just public seating, like those orange boxes in the corner, you can see they're just a great public seating space, but they can be programmed to do story time. Maybe you can do an exercise step class on there. 
um, making sure that everything is really engaging and educational and interactive. I mean, everything from striping our sidewalks to have a 40 meter sprint or something like that. So they're really being smart at programming every single inch of our space. And we're really excited to be working with them. And then, do you want me to this one? Nope, go back. I'm back. It's not going back. There that was go. the sawtooth, correct? Yes. Correct. So we'll show you this one image and then we're going to leave it um, at that because we don't want to give too much away. But this is um, really showing uh, the length of the um, pavilion. That's kind of where it's starting, the farmer's market pavilion. You can see those glass doors that retract, beautiful landscaping. That's that, yeah, sawtooth. Sawtooth. <laughs> yes. Councilmember Scott. What direction is this facing? James Garner Avenue. James so Garner. I'm so, just wondering because of the, I wonder if it's facing east because of the lighting, if that is like was factored in trying to get more sunlight into yeah, the so building. So you'll see on the sawtooth at the top where she was talking about, the light will be coming in. Those windows from the, north side. From mm -hmm. the north side? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was one thing we mentioned to them um, with the, the sun orientation with rising and setting and making sure you didn't have that really direct yes. heavy sunlight. So this will be coming in from the north. This okay. light will fall down. Building. And this, this is facing east. East. Right. right. The the main kind of entrance and hub will be facing James Garner, which we're really excited about. Um, it'll also kind of lead into future county plaza area, all their remodeling and future projects that they're going to do as well. I think one of the things I'm excited about is we're having this conversation about public transit. We can make sure our buses get here, but the Norman Absolutely. Depot should be a stop with RTA, yes. which right. means that more would have an easier time getting here as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's a great lead in mayor because I'm here to offer you guys an opportunity. This is our chance for us to partner together. If you remember, we had a conversation and it was probably, I'm going to say two years ago now, Sarita, you came over and Bill, I think you were there, Mayor, you were there, and we had a discussion about this was truly the perfect storm that was creating in this area. And it is that we have James Garner Avenue, which is part of Norman Forward. We have the new library. We have our healthy living. We have the new yeah, county master the plan. County. We have the hub of the train depot that's going in. You guys have the center city vision that you have of what you want to create a more walkable, dense area. This truly is the opportunity for that to be the beginning of all that in this downtown area of what we create from that. We would love to be the first project plan that is in the center city TIF, and we would love for you guys to partner with us to do this. So you, as you envision what this area is going to be moving forward, think about a market area where people can live, shop, play, and be 24 seven, where the church is right next door to it. We have the, the play space from the church. We have the parking lot there. We have the high density housing that's going to go in. This is truly an opportunity for all this to grow from the ground up, starting with this structure. So what we would love to see is that council, when we've talked with uh, staff, consider an MOU moving forward that you will give serious consideration to this being the first project plan in the center city TIF and that we can partner on this moving forward. Uh, don't know who's still here that was a part of the Center City TIF negotiations, discussions as that came to fruition. But truly part of that was that the city would play a part in that. Ad valorem dollars would be used for that. I think the total, and Brenda, what was it, 45 or $47 million for that Center City TIF. And uh, so we're asking that you consider part of that TIF money through an MOU that will turn eventually into a project plan, this project to start with. And uh, this would begin all of that. Had great discussions with Bill even recently of how that's gonna affect his ward and what that's gonna do for the downtown area. But that's what we would like to see as uh, a commitment from council to be a part of this. So love to take as many questions as you have now as you have time for, but uh, that's what we're here for. We wanted to present it to you. And then we want to get you on board to be partners with this as we move forward. Councilmember Scott. Okay, so I'm curious, and I'll be quick. If you are asking for an MOU to make this a part of the Center City TIF 
project plan? Mm -hmm. Would you then consider revisiting the LEED certification and the commitment to solar as the city has made a commitment to being completely renewable by 2035? I think that would depend on how much money that the city is willing to put into the uh, project plan for those. As you know, I don't know how many of your buildings in Norman Ford right now are LEED certified or uh, have solar capacity, but it's extremely expensive to do that and very <clears throat> cost prohibitive. And so that's the reason. It's so, also very good for the environment. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that you guys desire and you're willing to put the money into to make that happen, we would consider that. Thank hey, you, Tom. <laughs> Councilor Wilson. I would like to see, uh, just as you're working, thinking yeah. about this, um, definitely I, I like the idea of a commercial kitchen that could be used as a business incubator for small cottage businesses to grow up as, outside of their home kitchens. Um, and that's kind of something that's needed in this area and probably could be used by more as well because I know most of the people in this region go to Oklahoma City to the only mm -hmm. one that's available. So I would like to see that. Uh, and I will say, qualify that. I got the information from Kate, so I, I kind of stole it. Sorry. That's okay. Um, <laughs> well, then before you get off that one, that's what we've been talking to some of our local technology centers about. And so maybe that space that they can program, that mm -hmm. they can help set up, that we can do. Uh, you talked about Mother Road Market. They have something like that as well. And so space that we've uh, seen there and that we hope to market <clears throat> something kind of like that as far as that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing that my personal thing that keeps popping into my mind is um, a stop station or a healthy stop station for homeless people where there's an opportunity to shower and I've talked to also the city about things that we can do here on our complex that might help in that situation um, but I would like to see something like that in our community so if there's room for that at some point Councilmember Hickman. Um, thanks, you guys, for your presentation, Darian. And this is in Ward 4. Uh, and so I've been involved with the Center City discussions, well, since they began in 2014, I think it was, both as a citizen and when I got on council. And I certainly feel like your county project is in line, very much in line, and supports the vision that the people wanted for Center City and what the form-based code is intending uh, to, to promote, have happened there. Uh, I do think that, as I uh, said to you, that I do need your smart people to get with our smart people about the James Garner Road, <laughs> you know, and how it's going to be designed in the parking. I do have just, I, I just don't think that's done. So we need to work through those issues, and I'm sure we can. We are just as concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and so I'm looking back at, at Sean back there hiding me. You know, uh, that, so we, that does need to be, I would recommend that from a city standpoint, we begin to make that a priority, the design of that road in collaboration with you guys. Uh, I also um, uh, fully support this being a TIF project. And, um, you know, and just to, just for anybody who freaks out when I say the word TIF, we have a Johnson and Associates infrastructure plan that discusses in detail the infrastructure block by block that is to be done from, from um, streetscape to sidewalks to water line to sewer lines, et cetera. And I think that as a, as a, partnership between the city and the county, we should sit down with you guys, go through that Johnson Associates report and put in place the agreements to ensure that those shares of TIF dollars that are ad valorem dollars, frankly, are uh, allocated to this project. I mean, you guys are the county and technically it's ad valorem dollars that's in this, in this TIF. And this is an exact kind of project that was envisioned when we did the center city um, charrette process and the form based code. And I, I know we have our, our city attorney and um, Carol Dillingham, county attorney, who's a Ward 4 resident, mm -hmm. smart people who can sit down and start putting that paperwork together because we have a lot of detail already. But I'm sure from the county's perspective, it's important to get that done so you know what kind of funds you may have to help support the project financially. And I would just say from my perspective as the Ward 4 rep that uh, I fully support support that. Uh, as to Councilmember Scott's comment, I understand and I don't do I don't disagree that I'd love to see solar there. I'd love to see other cool stuff, That's but those are not infrastructure items. And so I don't believe right now we can spend TIF dollars out of the, that we can spend TIF dollars on things that are not infrastructure, that are not in the project plan currently. So that would be a discussion if council wanted to take other funds to put into the kitty, potentially, if that's what the county required, 
to have you upgrade your project to be solar or other kinds of things. I, I don't think that could come from TIF funds. I just wanted to uh, kind of, a of make that First, clear. I want to say I do appreciate your support. You've been a huge advocate as we've gone through this whole process. So I appreciate that. The only thing that I would add is I'm not sure the Johnson study envisioned this project at that location at the time. So in my discussions with city attorney and county attorneys, we may need to go back and revisit that portion of the study so that it takes into account the things that we are doing as a public entity on that property. So not that they haven't already looked at that, not like that there's sewer issues, water line issues, things that can be addressed as well when we go there, but I don't think we've looked at this project itself as part of that. So we may need to do exactly what you said and go back and take a closer look at this particular. Yeah, absolutely, project. and I think we would, I mean, Johnson & Associates report was an estimate and was a snapshot in time. Uh, absolutely, on any project, we'll have to go back and look at the real world scenario of what the project is. But I, I do think this is a great project. And I, and I just wanna say, I, I compliment you know, Commissioner Stacy and the rest of you commissioners that from my perspective, there's a lot of talk in town has been about community partners and partnering with other entities. And this is what a partnership looks like in my mind, which is where we've had conversations, we've had meetings, there's been asking for input, a true collaboration, not even beyond in the sense of partnership, but a collaboration. And I, for one, uh, very much appreciate that from the county's perspective and you guys, you know, really collaborating and working with us. And uh, that's in part, large part, while, while it's a great project, while you have my full support. Thanks. Well said, Councilmember Hickman. Councilmember Carter. Uh, do you have a timeline for these phases? A rough timeline. So this project itself, we're hoping to break ground probably March, April of next year. So uh, we're moving along in the design phase. If everything mm -hmm. keeps continuing to go at the pace that it is, that's what our hope is. And so then construction. probably that will probably be about a year for construction. So uh, the parking garage, which if you guys want to hear more about that in the future, we're more than happy to show you that and tell you more about it. But uh, it may be uh, beginning on a parallel path at about the same time. And so we're hoping that we can uh, get both of those projects going uh, sometime next year. Councilmember Wilson. Yeah. Um, I had a question and it left, but um, I did want to say that I feel like this is the kind of project that the TIF funding mechanism should be used for. So in that capacity, I support this type of a project. Of course, whatever we come up with, Will have to be examined as it comes to me. But um, there was a question. Oh, what are we doing with the old old uh, farmers market and those buildings? Are just repurposing those? So that is a uh, very vibrant area, the the farm, uh, the fairgrounds right now, and we rent that space. And there is no question that we will continue to be able to utilize and rent that space on a so regular a basis so the farmers market will move to this location but there's no question we have programming set and ready to go at the fairgrounds that will uh, immediately step in and use that space so and speaking of that the fair is coming in september please everybody come <laughs> put visit. together a celebrity cow milking team Fair yes. warning. I got you. I, know, so I got some ringers. That's what you said. I know. <laughs> oh, Brenda was your ringer you were talking about. Maybe. I got you. Councilmember Holman. Yeah. Uh, so, my top priorities with the Center City TIF are um, improving the infra physical infrastructure of this area of town. The alleyways are a big priority. Um, the block by block sidewalks, curb and gutter, drainage, all of that has been the primary intent of it. Um, and I would definitely need to you know, get with staff and find out how much we're expecting to spend on those issues. But um, outside of that, this, I agree that this is the exact type of project I would envision that these types of dollars would be used for outside of streets and sidewalks. Something like this is what I would, I would support spending those type of public dollars on something like this that I know will benefit the public, uh, not just in Norman, but the whole county for generations. Even. And draw so, people in. Yeah, so I'm very interested in more. I, I appreciate uh, all the work that you guys have. And so you know, just to that very point, we plan to make this a destination. It's not just a place that uh, 
residents in this area come to. It's a destination that Mother Road Market people will come from out of town to come see. So that's what our goal is. Mayor Clark, before um, you all adjourn, not to be crazy about this, but I would love to pick up any printouts you have of this presentation. So I can there's take those. There's none in here. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. We have five minutes till our next meeting begins. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Better. No, this meeting is Better adjourned. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We got to eat. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much for your presentation.